Assalamualaikum and hi to all of you. We are from group 2E are going to share with you guys our video about one of the food additives which is coloring agents. Don't forget to click the like button and enjoy! Coloring agents are any dye, pigment or substance that transmits color when added to food. They are limited for cosmetic of the food, they will influence appetite and choice of food and they are also important in food manufacturing. Color of foods may indicate many perceptions such as type of flavor, ripeness and degree of sweetness. There are two sources of coloring agents. The first one is natural. Natural is when they were being taken from plants or fruits. The second one is synthetics. Synthetics coloring agents were created in a laboratory or industrial setting. So, why we add coloring agents in food? They were being added to retain the color loss during processing, to enhance the color that already present and to color the uncolored food. Now, let's look at three categories of coloring agent permitted in food. The first category is color obtained from natural sources. The first example is anthocyanin responsible for the color of some fruits and vegetables. Color is from red to blue. The second example is carotenoids, which responsible for the yellow to red color in carrots, tomatoes, turmeric, and cooked prawn. And the third example is porphyrin, which include chlorophyll A, blue-green color, and chlorophyll B, yellow green color the second category is synthetic compounds chemically identical to naturally occurring color some of the example is beta carotene yellow to orange color beta apple egg carotenoid orange red to red color beta apple egg carotenoid acid ethyl ester orange to yellow orange color and Kentazantin red color. The third category is synthetic compounds with no chemical counterpart in nature. The example involves coal tar dyes, which include brilliant black, brilliant blue, carmoisin, red in color. Chocolate brown HT, brown in color, erythrocyte, red in color, fast green, sunset yellow, orange in color, and tartrazine, yellow in color. Next, let's move on to application of coloring agent in food industry.
Application of Coloring Agent in Food Industry As we all know, the purpose of coloring agent is to increase consumer perception of the overall food's quality and content. Let's explore together the applications of coloring agent in food industry. The first application is applied in drinks and beverages. Synthetic coloring such as tartrazine, sunset yellow, and carmosine are used in fruit flavored soft drink. Aurora black and brilliant black are used in wine production. The second application is in sugar product. In confectionery products such as gummies and sugar, coloring agents such as anatole, red beet, beta carotene, turmeric, carmine, and tocyanin, paprika, and apple egg carotenol is used. The third application field is in bakery products. Caramel is used in the coloring of rye bread. Tartarazine, sunset yellow are also used in chocolate cake, breakfast snacks, plain cakes and wafers. Next, it is also used in canned food and vegetables. Anthocyanin, beta carotene, carminic acid, and chlorophyll are natural colorants used in canned fruits and vegetables. Commonly synthetic colorants used in canned fruit are emeralds, alloreds, and sunset yellow. It is also used in dairy products. Beta carotene and anatole are added into butter and cheeses, and almost all ice cream and yogurt is added with coloring agent. Last but not least, it is also applied in meat and fish product. Water soluble colorant suitable for pickling are required for fish product produced by curing and smoking. And most durable is brown FK, but mixtures of carmosine, tartarazine, and sunset yellow can also be used. Now let's discuss the analysis of coloring agents. There were several types of analysis methods which were widely used but are now considered to have outdated methodologies such as paper chromatography, thin layer chromatography, gas chromatography as well as capillary electrophoresis. However, over the past years there is one method which has shown to provide much more potential for the analysis of colouring agents which is liquid chromatography. In this video, we will be discussing the HPLC analysis of beta lane pigment in red beads. This analysis uses high-performance liquid chromatography which carries the abbreviation HPLC. HPLC is an advanced type of liquid chromatography. Another equipment that will be used is ultraviolet visible absorbance detector which carries the abbreviation UV-VIS. Before we delve into the experiment, let's first discuss more about the HPLC method. So what does this HPLC equipment do? Well, it separates, identifies, and quantifies components of liquid samples. HPLC is one of the most widely applied analytical separation techniques. As for the principles of HPLC and how it works, first the sample is injected in the HPLC equipment and passed through a column packed with porous medium that consists of small porous particles, and this is considered the stationary phase. A solvent that is considered to be the mobile phase passes through the column to transport the sample. The sample is then absorbed on the stationary phase and the solvent that passes through separates the compounds one by one. This separation is based on the compound's relative affinity to the porous medium and the solvent. The component with the highest affinity has more time to travel to the end of the column and hence is the last to separate. We know that the HPLC equipment is more advanced than the liquid chromatography equipment, but what is the main difference between the two? Well, in the traditional LC, the solvent travels by the force of gravity, while in the application of HPLC, the solvent travels under high pressure obtained by a pump to overcome the pressure drop in the packed column, which will then reduce the time of separation. Next, let's take a look at the two main chromatography phases that are used in HPLC, which are the normal phase and the reverse phase. The main difference between normal phase and reverse phase chromatography is that the normal phase chromatography has a very polar stationary phase and a non-polar mobile phase, whereas reverse phase chromatography is the opposite as it has a non-polar stationary phase and a polar mobile phase. 
Now we come to the advantages of the HPLC method. Firstly, this method is sufficient. When using HPLC, the process can be completed quickly between a time frame of approximately 10 to 30 minutes and it delivers high resolution. This technique is also accurate and is largely automated which means that basic HPLC runs can be performed with minimal training. Next is versatility. HPLC is versatile as it has the advantage of not being restricted to particular types of solids and has a wide choice of mobile and stationary phases. And lastly is its reusability. The columns used in HPLC can be used repeatedly and there is no need for constant repacking with porous medium. As mentioned earlier, we will be using HPLC with a UV risk absorbance detector to analyze the betalane pigment in red beads. Optical detectors are important equipment and most HPLC instruments are equipped with one. Optical detectors are basically detection units used to recognize the analytes after leaving the column. The signals are converted and recorded by a data management system and then shown in a chromatogram. The detector unit will register the time, known as retention time, and amount of substance which is eluted from the column, known as peak area. A UV detector is an optical detector that measures the UV absorbance of the HPLC analyte and quantifies the amount of chromophoric compounds emerging from the HPLC column. There are three types, but we will only focus on one, which is the UV VIS detector. This device uses a deuterium source and a monochromator to allow the selection of a particular wavelength in the UV VIS region for detection. Finally, we have come to the methodology of the HPLC analysis of beta lane in red beads. Firstly, we prepare the red bead. Fresh red beads are obtained and the roots and stems are separated, washed, sliced and ground in a blender. The red beads are then stored at negative 4 degrees Celsius until utilized. Secondly, we have the beta lane extraction where an aqueous extraction is prepared from the roots and stems. The plant material is homogenized with distilled water and macerated for three times at room temperature. The obtained crude extracts are centrifuged at 8000 RPM for 30 minutes, filtered and evaporated at 40 degrees Celsius under reduced pressure until dry. Thirdly, we have the HPLC analysis where all sample analysis are performed in HPLC equipment equipped with a UV waste detector by using reverse phase chromatography. The separation is performed with a C18 column using two eluents which are isotonitrile and phosphoric acid. Complete separation of beta lanes is achieved within 35 minutes at room temperature with a flow rate of 1 ml per minute. The first 5 minutes is performed isocratically with 100% of phosphoric acid followed by linear gradient from 0 to 13% isotonitrile in phosphoric acid in 30 minutes. Beta lanes are monitored at 480 and 538 nanometers for beta xanthin and beta cyanin respectively. Based on a journal article titled Beta Lane and Phenolic Compositions, Antioxidant Activity of Tunisian Red Beet Roots and Stems Extracts, which was published in 2014, findings for HPLC analysis of red beets was obtained. Figure 1 shows the HPLC UV chromatograms of major compounds in the beta lane crude extracts from the roots in chromatogram A and the stems in chromatogram B at 538 nanometer and 480 nm. The peaks are numbered 1, 2 and 3, with 1 being Volga Xanthins 1, 2 being Betanin, and 3 being Isobetanin. While studying these chromatograms, by peak area comparison, the content of the different betalin compounds seem to be higher in red beet root than in the stem extract.